Hello, thanks for coming and welcome to this presentation about uh, scalable online machine learning. Um, uh, first, I, let me introduce myself. I am Javier de Matias. I work as data engineer in TreeLogic. Um, my company, TreeLogic, is an intensive research and development company with specialis specialized in, in big data and artificial intelligence. We apply these technologies and algorithms in, in a lot of target industry, as uh, banks, telecom, telcos, or healthcare, healthcare or, or retail. Uh, in, in respect to uh, big data solutions, we, we can uh, tackle uh, all, the, all, type, all, all the types of solutions with big data between, uh, between for example, uh, complete data architectures to uh, special use, use cases with special interest, interest in all the stages of the data, from ingestion to processing or uh, analytics, security. And respect to artificial intelligence, uh, we are ready to uh, obtain the maximum value to, to the data with uh, special interest in deep learning, right, formal learning, to, uh, to get use cases where apply uh, detection, uh, detection problems, classification, something like this. Okay, the, how is organized uh, my presentation? My presentation is organized, first I go to introduce what is uh, scalable online machine learning and why we think it's very interesting. interesting. Now, uh, secondly, we, uh, I will introduce what is uh, Solma library and how can use this type of problems. And finally, I, uh, I will show an industrial use case where we apply this, this library and this type, uh, this type of, of solution. Okay, what is scalable online machine learning? Scalable online machine learning is the, is, is the, idea, the main idea uh, goes with the confluence of two important trends now. First, uh, data stream processing, that is uh, very interesting now, and uh, the integration with machine learning that is the, the main solution to most of the analytic, data analytic problems. Uh, respect to stream processing, uh, we have uh, this set of good friends to, to, to implement solutions. We have uh, data stream processing frameworks to, to implement uh, application. We have uh, solutions to integrate different components like Kafka or RabbitMQ. We can implement jobs with Flink, Storm, Spark. Uh, all people uh, think that is uh, a good trend now because uh, companies need to process in real time or, re or near real time. But uh, there are a problem when we have to uh, integrate uh, machine learning in the data pipelines, in data stream processing pipelines. When we can find a solution to, to that, uh, the classical solution of the, ma on the, main, the main important solution is to, to divide the data workflows in two circuits. One circuit to create a machine learning model. To, um, we store historical data. We can train a, a machine learning model, test if the model is good or not, or is suitable. And when we decide that this model is suitable, we deploy it in the other circuit, the other circuit where this uh, machine learning model is, is, is used, for example, to make predictions or classifications. Um, this type of solution is the, is we can, uh, is the, the, the solution that we find when we search, for example, in Google, uh, how to solve it. For example, if you, I, I Google this, uh, this uh, topic, uh, uh, um, a month ago, and I find uh, some figures with the same solution. For example, this is an Azure solution, which we have a data lake where we store uh, events of uh, sensors, and with the, this historical data, I train the model and deploy in the, in the string analytics. Or this other with map error. Uh, we have a uh, stream processing, a batch processing. The batch processing store the historical data. We, with this historical data, we train the model. And finally, when the model is suitable for use in production, uh, I, we deploy 
in a, in a streaming processing. This is the, we can uh, talk about the, a classical solution, but this is not, uh, it's not totally good. We, 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 have, we can find problems with this type of solutions. First of all, I had to develop two data workflows, two different data workflows with common points, but different. We, we, as I explained before, we have a training data workflow and a prediction data workflow. Uh, the prediction or uh, exploiting the, uh, the exploit in the, 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 the machine learning model. This makes that we have to build uh, more complex architectures. And maybe these more complex architectures give us uh, more points of failure. And the most important thing, we don't have the most up-to-date model possible. Uh, if, for example, I decide to uh, train my machine learning model with the events produced or collected during the last month, and there are changes in my uh, in the during this month. I have a maybe I have a good machine learning model, but it's not totally uh, ready to uh, detect some uh, problems that there are in my in my uh, data trends. The data trends now. We we need we can uh, make uh, short the the time to to train and deploy the model. But I, I always have. Uh, old version of the most updated model possible. Okay, the, this is the, the drawbacks of the classical solution, but how we can solve it, or what is the idea of scalable online machine learning? The idea is to train and predict on, at the same time, and in, this, in the same solution, in the same uh, data workflow. Uh, on this way, we have a unique data workflow with less points of failure, uh, the data architecture that we propose uh, is, is simpler, and the most important thing, we have the most up-to-date model possible in, in each occasion. We have uh, the best model to uh, totally adapt it to the changes in the data trends. It, it, it seems uh, to be a, a good idea, but uh, what, what happened, it's difficult to, to implement uh, something like this. It's, diff it's, it's very difficult because we have two important challenges. First of all, I have a challenge respect to machine learning algorithms. Uh, not all the algorithms are suitable because uh, there are some algorithms that uh, need to process all the samples of the data set at the same time. And uh, this algorithm is not totally suitable to, uh, to use in, on this way. And the other thing, in, uh, I could uh, find algorithms which are suitable to be adapted to, the, to this processing way, but we have to adapt it because uh, these machine learning algorithms have to be ready to only process each data uh, only once. And in, it, maybe uh, we can find a lot of algorithms, but have to be ready to use in the, on this way. The other uh, challenge is a technical challenge. This is an example of a uh, uh, Flink cluster, how uh, a Flink application is executed in a cluster. Uh, the job manager receives a task and uh, parallelizes the, the tasks or the, the, the job between the, task, the different task managers, three task managers in this case. The problem is where uh, 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 the task managers, uh, for example, has to train the, the machine learning model. Um, but where is this machine learning model uh, stored? Because all the task managers need to, uh, need to access to, to this uh, machine learning model and needs to put, uh, could uh, be, able, they, they may be able to, uh, to update this, this machine learning model. This challenge is, or this uh, component that we can, uh, we can find to solve this, this problem is Parameter server. A parameter server is a piece of or a component of the architecture we can, where we can store the machine learning model and with a communication between the workers. The Spark workers, for example, is a, is a, is a Spark cluster or a communication with the task managers is a Flink solution. This parameter server can solve the, the problem. Once we know what is uh, Scalable online machine learning and uh, how the, the challenge that we need to 
to, uh, to tackle. Uh, I will show as, as a library that, that tried to solve this, this problem, this Solma library. So my library is an open source library with a, um, of online machine learning algorithms. It's open source. It's, uh, it was code during the development of a uh, European research project. Um, it contains two important things. Uh, first, a collection of uh, online machine learning algorithms and a set of abstractions to make easy to develop new uh, algorithms with this premise. Uh, Solma uh, have algorithms which adapted to, to, this, uh, to this paradigm that uh, how solves the problem of parameter server? Solve, the param uh, solve this problem with a project, an open source project called uh, Flink Parameter Server. Flink Parameter Server is an abstraction for the model parallel machine learning model and it could be used, it could be integrated in a, in a Flink job. Uh, this solution is, is, a, is a solution that you, we can integrate in the, data, in the Flink uh, uh, streaming API. How works uh, Flink Parameter Server? Flink Parameter Servers have a, a communication within this, then a communication between the, between the uh, with respect to the workers. The workers have an input data stream and an output data stream. And during the processing of the worker, maybe uh, the, the need to access to the machine learning model. If, if the, there are two operations to uh, communicate between the parameter server and the worker. If we need to uh, recover the um, most update version of the model, we make a pull operation to obtain the model. If we uh, uh, have, uh, we have a more so that version, for example, in the training step, if we uh, uh, get a most uh, updated version of the model, we have to make a push operation to update the, the, parameter, the machine learning model stored in the parameter server. The communication between the worker and the parameter server is asynchronous. We can make a pull operation to obtain to request the model, but only uh, we have to wait uh, until the, we receive the answer pool to, to obtain the, the, really the model. Is the working and the communication? For example, if the, wor if, uh, the worker receives a new label da data and to train the model, uh, the worker has to pull the, the model to the parameter server, wait until receive the answer pool, and finally, uh, train with the new data, the, the train this model, and when this new version of the model is sustained, push to the parameter server to, to be ready for the other, other workers. This is the, the main uh, working. Uh, this is the, the interface between the workers and the parameter server, but uh, how we implement the relation with parameter server. We, ha we had only to, re to implement two things. Uh, what, what we do when we receive data, we will implement the method on receipt. When I receive new data, how, uh, how my, uh, my work uh, works. And what we do when I receive uh, the, 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 the machine learning model from the parameter server. It's like a, a callback. With these two implementations, we can interact, uh, we can implement the interaction between the, the, mod, uh, the um, worker and the parameter server. And uh, Solma uh, explained uh, um, in the other uh, slide, Solma uh, is prepared, is ready to uh, to uh, add new algorithms that have abstractions to make easy this, this work. Uh, how is the implementation of a new uh, machine learning, of online machine learning algorithms with Solma? We only, you only have to implement two things. Uh, the method delta is to implement what we do when we receive new level data. So we update how I update the lasso model, for example, in this, in this case, and predict what what we do, how we do the prediction with the model. With, two, with these two, only these two things, 
is implemented a new algorithms in the, in the library. All the rest of the necessary uh, implementation is included in the abstraction and the implementation of uh, Solma. It's very easy to in introduce new algorithms because we only have to think how to uh, uh, train the model and predict the model with only one uh, sample. Okay, this is the, um, the Solma library. And we know what is the Calabal Line Machine Learning, the Solma library. Maybe it's the, the time to talk about a use case where we, can, uh, we were, uh, have applied this, this technology. I go talk about an industrial use case. It's about uh, steel making. Uh, steel makers make a lot of types of products. Uh, different final, final products are very different. We, we can use steel to car manufacturers, to uh, a turbine or um, a cable. In this case, we talk about produce um, a steel coil. What is a steel coil? In a simple language, a steel coil is a very long and thin piece of steel uh, roll up. It's something like this, this roll. It's a very big roll of steel. Um, uh, how is the, the production of a, of a steel coil? It's, it's, you, we, we have in the beginning a big block of steel, and after a processing of temperature and pressure, we obtain this the, the final uh, steel coil of a thin, uh, a thin uh, layer of, of, uh, of a steel. What's the key in the, the production? The key in the production of a steel coil is the flatness. Uh, it's very important that the final product have the enough flatness to be uh, suitable for, for the purpose that it was uh, made. Um, the, the idea of, the, of this problem is we have a data stream processing problem where we receive data of the sensors that, the, the, that is measured during the production of the steel coil, and we have to predict if the, if the um, final steel coil will be flatness, or as flat as, as, as is needed uh, to the final purpose. Uh, the problem is here is, here is that the, we, all, we only know the real flatness in the steel coil when the two or three minutes uh, after the steel coil is, is produced. And it's a problem because the, the maker needs to know before to uh, maybe stop the production or to uh, and downgrade the, the quality of the, of the steel. Other problem is that the, we receive uh, fragmented uh, data. Uh, we only receive uh, the, uh, the data of a uh, sensor at, uh, at a time. We do not receive all the data uh, in, the, in the same period of time. We receive during the processing of the steel coil, we receive a lot of events of, uh, of data. The, the events that we receive it have this format. We, we know what is the coil ID, the identifier of the coil. It's only to identify to, to know what's the a number of, to, to number the, the coil. Bar ID, that we the identifier of the variable that we, uh, the, the observer variable. This variable could be uh, a variable of temperature, pressure, or, or other, uh, important uh, magnitude in during the processing. The value, what is, what, how, how, what is the value of this variable in, in, uh, of the coil, and what is the coordinate? Where the coordinate is the, the position of this measurement in the uh, complete uh, piece of, uh, of steel. How we receive the, the data in the problem? The, the problem we receive the data in two Kafka topics. One of, the, of them, re, uh, have the information of these measurements of the sensors, and other have the, uh, the measure of uh, flatness at the end, with a delay respect to, the, to these uh, real-time measurements. Okay, this is the, the, the two uh, 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 the input data. 
how, what, who is the expected output data? It's very simple. We expect to know an early prediction of the flatness in the final piece of, of steel, because it's not possible to know uh, at, uh, in, in during the processing. And uh, the global or the final solution will be uh, um, an application, in this case a, job, uh, a flink job, who receives two topics, one for the sensor measurements and other for the flatness measurements, and produce, uh, producing an other uh, Kafka topic, a flatness prediction. This flatness prediction will be read for, for a, will be read for, for an operator in the factory and uh, he could decide if this uh, steel coil would be good or not, or the, uh, maybe if the steel coil will be the, at the, the best uh, quality or maybe uh, uh, two or three grades in, uh, less than this uh, best, best uh, grade of quality. Okay, this is the, the idea, but how, to, how this work, how works the application? Uh, the, the, as I explained in the, before, uh, the data is fragmented. Why? Because the, between the uh, starting of production of the coil and the end of production, we receive a lot of uh, event measurements. And in each, um, for example, in, 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 as we can see in this, in this chronogram, uh, you will recite from uh, sensor one, the variable one, in the x co uh, coordinate five, a value of 14 for point, uh, three uh, of this value. Or we receive the different sensor uh, information in different times during the, the processing. And only uh, after the coil, uh, who, what's end, we receive the flatness measurements, the real flatness measurement. This real flatness measurement is the information that we need to know if I would predict or not well. Where we predict and where we uh, try the model. Uh, in each time that we receive an input event, I make a prediction. Uh, with this uh, value of a variable in a position, we, can, we need to know how, how we will the flatness. And when the, I train the model, I train the model when I have all the information at the end. At the end, I receive the, the real flatness values, and with these values, I can train with all the events of the, of the received during the coil production. We, have to take into account that we need enough memory to, uh, to uh, store uh, the, the event, input events before receive the, uh, the final flatness because we need to label these input uh, measurements with the real flatness values. We, when we have, have this information labeled, we can train the model and update it in the parameter server. This is the, the how is, uh, the, the application works. And what's the, the results of this uh, uh, application? The result is to, uh, this is a comparison, this, is, this figure is a comparison between the um, prediction, of, uh, our prediction, which is the top uh, figure, and the um, uh, real flatness measurement in the, in the bottom of the, of the picture. In a detail, we can see that the, we can detect, we can not detect the absolute value of the, the flatness, but we can detect the uh, data trends in or data trends changes in the in the in this in the in the um, measure of flatness. It is maybe um, it's not enough to to get an absolute value, but it's enough to to the operator to uh, decide if the, uh, if the coil is good or not, and what is the uh, data quality of the, of the steel quality of the final coil. Okay, this is the, the results of the, of the solution. Uh, what the conclusion about this, uh, this technique? Our conclusion is that uh, machine learning in, in data streaming application is uh, totally integrated and there are a lot of solutions now to use it. 
but uh, and scalable or line machine learning could be a, a good solution because uh, it's uh, a promise solution and it, it seems to be good to 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 use. The problem now uh, is that uh, we have um, an uh, important piece of in, the, in this architecture, that is parameter server. But the parameter server solution that we can find now has to evolve and to integrate better in the data processing frameworks. Today, uh, we have solutions like Flink parameter server or other solutions to Spark, but are not enough mature. In the future, maybe uh, it's necessary to find uh, technologies to, to to implement uh, it with a uh, best performance and better adapted to the to the to all the uh, possibilities that we can find in this type of problems. Uh, for example, Free Parameter Server is an open source project. It's very interesting, but it's supported only for two or three uh, open source contributors, and they uh, um, they, they did it in, in the in the GitHub repository. You can use it, but it's not. It's an experimental solution. For example, the um, the, the industrial use case that I, I will uh, I have explained is uh, only a prototype because it's uh, very difficult to deploy it in a, a production environment. Maybe when the, we can find uh, a mature solution for um, parameter server. Uh, we can obtain a good solution for, the, for, this, for this type of, of scalable online machine learning algorithms. Um, okay, if that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and I wait your questions. And I have heard that uh, parameter servers can be uh, slow sometimes because when you have a lot of parameters to deploy, um, there is a lot of traffic in the cluster. So how do you feel this performance issue? Yes, this is main, um, the main problem in, in the parameter server because uh, this uh, communication between the workers and the parameter server maybe can uh, mm, have a problem when you have a lot of traffic between the between them. This this is the, the one of the reasons because this uh, is a experimental solution because we can f you can find problems with them when you have a lot of traffic. There are maybe you have in, uh, included problems of deadlocks because it's an asynchronous communication and maybe uh, the parameter service is waiting to receive a. Uh, uh, an answer for the worker, and the worker is uh, waiting something for the server, and you can uh, find a deadlock. This is one of the reasons for this uh, uh, experimental solution. Okay, more questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>